All right. Um, today's lecture is uh, about uh, member functions and privacy, and or as as um, uh, the object-oriented uh, uh, terminology for it, methods and privacy. Um, methods and privacy, and we're going to deal a little bit with I/O um, at the end and show you exactly how formatting is done. Because from now on, uh, you notice that down to this point when you were doing the, the the workshops, there were no formatting. You would just dump whatever you had on the screen. It was just a wobbly type of thing on the screen. From now on, everything's going to be asked to be formatted properly. So uh, we're going to start with uh, um, member functions and privacy. You know, um, um, can one of the brave people in a class tell me what uh, uh, polymorphism was, if you can recall? Sorry, not polymorphism. So um, brain doesn't work. Brain doesn't work. Ah, so, sorry. Um, encapsulation. <laughs> what encapsulation is? Whoever it was who uh, by uh, by uh, binding together of member function member functions and data members. Member functions and data members. That's uh, numero uno. That's number one. And the second one. And log logic as well. Data variables. Yeah. Uh, so so uh, member functions and variables, which we call it methods and attributes. Okay. Uh, when they become when a function becomes a member function, then it becomes an attribute. Uh, sorry, uh, a method. When a member when a variable becomes a member variable, it's called an attribute. A class has methods and attributes, or as C plus plus says, member functions and member variables uh somebody else was saying something what what was what is the second thing about encapsulation put it to that on behavior that's perfectly encapsulation that's perfectly completely valid thing to say but there is one important thing that is added to a feature that is added to a class by this encapsulation Remember about the 25 cent example or the coffee thingy, a dollar example that I told you if we go to Tim Hortons and I want to ask you a dollar, Permission? I can either ask, what was, what was that, Linda? Permission. Permission, thank you. So yeah. what, something that encapsulation actually emphasizes is the fact that you need permission to access attributes or member variables only if you have permission for it, which is essentially enforces privacy. So today's session is all about encapsulation. So essentially, I should have written at the top of the thing instead of methods, member functions, and privacy, simply encapsulation. Are we okay? Yeah. With, are we okay with this? Yeah. Are we talking about classes? Oh yeah. Okay, that's sure. <laughs> Oh, thank you, John. So I completely <laughs> forgot. We are talking about classes, by the way. <laughs> yeah, so uh, putting the data on behavior. So encapsulation essentially applies to classes. Um, without, without a capsule, encapsulation is, I think, not even defined. We can't say encapsulation needs a capsule, right? And that capsule is the is the class. So I see uh, Kayrat and Elham did not reply if they're okay with the definition of encapsulation. Are you guys are you guys good? Kayrat, come on. You can do it. You can't? Let me see what's coming in chat. Yeah, I, <laughs> I just <laughs> did. Ah, you just saw the screen, didn't you? All right. Okay, so <clears throat> um, to put this in perspective, uh, I'm going to start coding as usual. So, so my purpose right now, so by the end of the class, you will understand exactly what does it mean uh, to have member functions? What does it mean to, to have things private and public? And what is accessible, what is not? What is, um, all, all the things we'll understand about it. Um, and, and we start by writing a program in C language. Um, and uh, later on, uh, kind of transform it to uh, a C++, and which essentially means we write it in a structured way, then we're going to convert it to object-oriented and see what the devil is the difference, what, the, what is a big hoopla about, okay? 
but of course we cannot put all the features and stuff so the design might look incomplete but uh, that's what we're going to do okay Rata, are we good you wanted to say something Ali? No, no, just, uh, I don't know why it's reconnecting. Oh, so, yeah. big blue button likes you. He wants to hear. It wants to hear your uh, voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I give <guess> my voice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, let's start. So, say I want to create an account uh for like representation of an account account uh for if, in a bank if i want to do something like that my account could be something like uh uh something that has a number and a balance and let's actually add one more thing to it uh what else i want to add some dynamic memory allocation make it a little juicy in there or maybe we can add that later hmm yeah let's not make it too complicated it's just for now we have an account, account has a number and has a balance. So you have an account number, 316452, whatever, whatever, and then you have uh, a balance. Later on, we're gonna actually add the institution to it, something like, um, yeah, if we have time, I'm gonna add some dynamic memory allocation to it so we can actually uh, kind of keep you on your toes on, on DMA that we, that we talked about. So uh, what I'm gonna do actually, I am going to add uh, the um, a character string for the name of the bank so uh, bank name but I'm gonna leave it unimplemented which I'm not going to implement it just let it be there and later on I'm gonna add to it if I need to so for now let it be there so we have bank name we have number and we have balance so are we okay with the definition of an account is it uh, satisfactory All right. Uh, okay, so the uh, very first thing that we need to like, the very first thing that you need to know about your, your account is to see what is the balance inside the account number. Now, we could simply, it's C language, I could simply say C out. So let's actually write the, the unit test has to be written right off the bat. So as you see, this is my unit test. A uh, unit test is written to test my program as it goes for every single feature that I add, and I'm going to keep using it and keep go keep going with it. So um, in here, I'm going to create an account because it's C++. I don't need to write struct account. It bec account becomes an account as it's created, and I'm going to call it ACC. Now I can simply say C, um, um, C out what is the balance and number. And in here, I can go C in ACC dot uh, balance and ACC dot number. So I'm getting the ba balance and the number, and I'm going to see I say C out uh, balance that is ACC dot balance, and go to new line and see out balance oh sorry number uh, let's actually put the number first so i'm going to say see out hmm. account number and in here it's going to be account number <clears throat> okay yeah, so it's gonna so it's a very simple thing. What is the uh, balance number and all those good stuff? Uh, so in here, what is the balance and the number? So balance is one thousand two hundred thirty-four dollars and fifty-six cents, and the account number is one two three four five six. And I print that out. So account number is that. Balance is that. <clears throat> this is the simplest thing I've ever written in my life. Are we all okay with this? <clears throat> all right. So we're good. So. Let's, uh, what I just did, I just broke into the bank, in the, uh, into the bank, accessed the guts of somebody's account and took it out. So I can change the balance without anybody knowing. So we have to take those things away. So if I want to know what the balance is, I have to have a function. And that function, I'm going to call it double, uh, let's say, get balance. 
And in that get balance of mind, that now I'm going to pass the, the account reference to it. Therefore, and it's going to be const so they can change it. Account reference, and I'm going to call that one A. <clears throat> now in here, I'm going to say return <clears throat> A dot balance. So if I actually want to get the balance, instead of just putting my hand into the guts of account and take the balance out, I'm going to actually be more civilized and I'm going to say get balance and I'm going to put the account account in here. And therefore the result is exactly the same with absolutely no difference. And if I run it, I'm going to get the exact same result. $12.34, say one, two, three, four, and that's my number and balance. Are we okay with this? <clears throat> Now what you see over here is me being civilized and actually use get balance to get the balance of the uh, Dewey. We have a question? No. No. Good. Okay. So, um, um, and one more thing I want to do over here. Uh, just one second, please. Just one second, please. All right, so I just had to send someone a message. All right, so so we are back. All right. So again, I am trying to act civilized right now and 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 not to gain access like get put my hands in guts of the account and politely ask to give me the balance. But <clears throat> the stupid thing about it is that if I have another account over here I'm going to call it BCC, just because I, that one was ACC. And in here, I'm going to put uh, um, the bank. Uh, so BCC, actually, I have to put a bank name over here, which I can't. So I'm going to put null PTR. And then I'm going to put the account number, one, two, three, six, five. And then I'm going to put the... Uh, the balance in there which is one two three four point five six so that's my <clears throat> that's my account bcc now <clears throat> i to be able to actually gain access to these and let's actually write the the get get number two so it's essentially the same thing no difference and in here i'm going to call it get balance so this get balance becomes uh uh the balance uh, this, this becomes get number <clears throat> And it's the same thing. The only thing is that I am receiving the number here instead. <clears throat> and I could do the exact same thing to actually get the bank name. So if I want to later on imp to implement it, uh, that's version 2.0. <laughs> this is get name, <clears throat> get bank name. But for get bank name, I'm going to return a constant character pointer to make sure nobody can ch access it. They can just read it. Um, and I'm going to uh, return a dot M bank name. <clears throat> so now I have three functions in here. Now, the, 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 the stupid thing about this is that just take a look <clears throat> to actually get the bank number. I have to say get number and pass the, that one. And if I want to uh, deal with the second one, <clears throat> I'm doing the exact same thing and I'll put BCC over here. Now, if I actually run this program, <clears throat> we'll see that the, oh, that's the first one. So uh, that's that one. And we're gonna have uh, this, uh, this is the account number. There you go. So that's the first one and that's the second one. So my function is actually accessing the account, which is kind of weird because <clears throat> in real world, my apologies <clears throat> for uh, the noises. <clears throat> uh, what I'm saying is that uh, it, would be, uh, it would be nice uh, 
um, if I could change this in a way so the account could give me its number because get number and account pass to it it's not natural again going back to the reality that we have um, uh, let's see who's uh, who's uh, um, volunteer to talk to me now somebody somebody speak up hello okay Elham there you go hello. it's Elham and I and someone else and Alex right so we have Elham we have Alex so I'm saying Elham talk please hello hi how are you and now I'm saying who's the next person Alex talk hello okay so as you see I ask each of them to talk I did not say I did not take I did not take Alex, put it in a booth outside called talking so Alex can go in there so he's be, he will be able to talk. Each one of them has the cap have the capability. Each one of them ha have, has the capability to talk. This is the weird thing that we have in here. Instead of asking the account to give its number to us, we are putting the account in a booth, in, a, in an action and tell hey action put your hands inside the guts of the account and take the thing out so I did not make any difference in any case it just uh, I did the exact same thing that I did before but kind of behind closed doors which is not right for an object to be able to be an object it should be responsible of its own doing any way it wants and that's where object orientation comes through. So instead of now, now we can add actually more stuff to this. So for example, uh, if I want to open an account, what I can do, I can create the code. So let's actually have these things set up. So I had those. Now I'm going to create open an account. So with opening an account, obviously I'm I cannot send uh, the a constant uh, um, reference in. I'm going to put a regular reference so I can change it. Then I'm going to put a number and a balance um, and I'm going to open the account uh, and uh, uh, so it's going to set the number and the balance to whatever is needed. Um, if I want to actually show an account then I'm not going to go one by one display the account like this. I'm going to actually have a display function receiving a constant reference of account and I'm going to say account number is this and balance is that. So instead of this gibberish that I have written over here, I can actually write uh, display <clears throat> ACC and display BCC and therefore running it, it's going to give me a uniform way of uh, what the uh, uh, information uh, what the what the account information is so the balance is one two three point four five and here's the number and these are the information that I have with the balances and just for you just to show you um, <clears throat> you don't need to learn the formatting but I'm going to format it anyway just for you to see uh, how I'm going to teach what it is later on. So I'm going to use something to format my output over here um, that I'm going to teach later. So you just look at it coming out formatted. Don't try to learn it. I'm not going to even explain how it works. I'm just going to do it. Okay, so... So account number, let's say it's six of them. And we have zeros that left when we have, and it's right justified. <clears throat> and for balance, I have You know what? I changed my mind. It makes it too complicated and your attention is going to go out from the thing. I wanted to do this, but I'm changing my mind. I'm not going to do that now. My apologies. Forget about it. I'll do it at the end of the class. Okay, so now um, 
Anyways, let's just go with this. So now I have the display over here. Now, when you go to the bank, you want to be able to deposit some money into your account. And for that, obviously, I'm going to have a function called deposit. So deposit receives an account number to get a value and adds that value to the balance. Uh, if I want to withdraw from the account, what I will do over here, because uh, it's something that may happen and may not happen, then I'm going to create uh, pass the account number to withdraw. Uh, and I'm going to say this is the value that I want to withdraw from it. Uh, the possibility of this is uh, for account being greater than or equal to zero. So if the, sorry, uh, the, the balance to be greater than the value that we have. If the balance is greater than or equal to the value, which is if it's possible, then the account balance will be reduced by that value, which means that value is withdrawn from the account, withdrew from the account. Um, and it returns the possibility. So I will know if it's successful or not. Uh, and if I want to close the balance, um, uh, close an account, uh, what I do, I have to withdraw all the money out of it. And after withdrawing all the money, set everything to zero. So I'm going to see what is the balance. Then I'm going to set everything to zero and return that balance. So essentially, I created a series of stuff that I want to do with, the, with an account. Um, uh, going through it again, get balance, receives the reference of an account, returns the balance. Get number, receives the constant reference in our account, returns the number. Bank name, we haven't implemented it yet. If we have time, we'll do it. Returns a constant pointer that is the bank name of the account. Opening an account is essentially setting a number and the balance to certain value. That's opening an account. Displaying an account is to display the number and the balance. Depositing money to the account is adding a value to the account by using the reference of the account. And withdrawing the money from the account is having a value that I want to uh, withdraw. And if that is possible, withdraw is going to happen and the possibility is returned. So we know if it was successful or not. And to close the account, I return all the balance out, setting everything to zero. Um, that's my balance. And the unit test uh, for it would be uh, uh, a very simple thing. So essentially, if I want to uh, test it, let me just save this over here. I'm going to say zero. Uh, actually, I'm going to put a account non OO CPP. It is not object oriented, definitely. It's just some uh, kind of uh, structured program that we have written. Okay, now I'm going to uh, have this uh, tester, a unit test over here to test and see how it works. And <clears throat> so I'm going to create an account checking. I'm going to open the account with certain value uh, and an account number. I'm going to display the account number, depositing 200 bucks. Display it again. <clears throat> then withdrawing $420. It's going to tell me if it's possible or not. Um, and if it's not possible, then it's going to tell me I can't. Otherwise, it's going to say, well, how much is withdrew from it, withdrew, withdrew from it. And, and uh, to display, I'm going to display the account again, trying to withdraw another one. And if it's not possible, I'm going to say insufficient funds. Otherwise, do that. And then ch display it at the end, close it, display it again. Uh, and mm, that's it. And try to uh, um, display it at the end. So it's very simple and straightforward. I'm going to go through the execution. Then I'm going to ask you if you're completely confused with it or we are good to go. Uh, so oh, actually, I shouldn't have done it now. But let's let's do it now. OK, so I'm going to. OK, so uh, I'm. Um, Open checking, display checking. So it displays the check the, the account that is created, depositing 200 bucks. I'm going to call the deposit. It goes in here, adds the value to the balance, comes out. Um, $200 is deposited into it. I'm going to withdraw $420. 420 is passed to checking, uh, with checking to withdraw. Again, it checks to see if it is possible. And if we look at it, it is true. So it's possible. Therefore, the balance will be reduced and it's going to tell me that it is actually uh, 
uh, it's withdrew so so I withdrew uh, 420 bucks uh, displays the account after withdrawing the account and then it's gonna uh, try to withdraw another $420 out of it it comes over here the balance is not allowing to do so so that's not going to happen and it's going to tell us it's insufficient funds uh, display the account say closing this account and then closed it's going to actually close and to see if it actually uh, so uh, it actually closes it and tells how much was the amount that was uh, uh, withdrew from the account at the moment that it was closing so it's going to say 320 and 21, uh, 21 cents and display that is nothing in it and we're done uh, so that's essentially the account the the uh, um, uh, the account that I designed so are we okay with the design of this everybody understood how it works Wait a minute. Okay, so that's that. Uh, get number is returning a double when it's an int. My get, oh, is it? Is it? Oh, <laughs> thank you. Who said that? Max. Max, thank you. I like that. I like that. I like that that you actually paid attention. Very nice. Very, very nice. Very, very nice. Uh, let me see how did the poll go. All right. Thank you. It was really good. I like it. I like it. All right. So that's that. So now that we have this, I want to see what's going to be the difference when I actually. So this is my account. I'm going to say account. Oh, before doing that, I just want to show you something in here. Look at my uh, test program over here. So if I want to in here I uh, um, in here what I did uh, let's do something over here so I'm gonna deposit 200 bucks over here and then see what I'm gonna do checking dot M balance plus equal twenty two dollars and thirty three cents okay so take a look at see what happens so I'm running this program and it creates the account so that's the account deposits two hundred dollars so you expect to see over here is to see seven hundred and forty three dollars but behind the scene me being a stupid person by mistake I changed the balance for some idiotic logic and then I display then the, the thing that the, the uh, uh, math doesn't add up anymore so me being able to access the balance of the checking account as an outsider programmer as a as a unit test because unit test is essentially is the tester that is testing the checking and it should check all these vulnerabilities and now this is vulnerable because I just access the balance awful okay so this is what we don't want so the, so I'm gonna sort of just put it over here can do this I can do this do this where I am not supposed to so essentially I can uh, break my own logic by mistake and although this is something very obvious and you gotta say why would you do something stupid like that believe me when you are programming you start doing stupid stuff that you had no idea you would do so this is a very simple logic but when it becomes way too complicated stuff like this will really cause trouble okay so 
now let's see how we can actually fix this program make this actually an encapsulated object so it is still a non-OO account but I want to make it it is um, yeah kinda OO so now when we are dealing with uh, C++ a structure and a class are the exact same thing so what I'm going to do in here I'm gonna not just touch the structure and I'm gonna just convert this to a class first of all these are the things I don't want anybody to be able to touch it so the very first thing that I can do is say private by doing something like this look at what happened down here all these functions outsider functions that they don't belong to the account look none of them can access anything inside that structure anymore and everything is completely out of access of course the whole program won't work anymore because none of my functions can work so by adding private at the top of these I am essentially saying that hey this structure of mine is now private nobody's allowed to access this thing other than the account itself so it's like I'm saying okay now your I don't know long is not accessible by anyone that's a stupid thing because by nature it is like when you're looking at a watch you are you're only looking at the time that is showing that's your uh, access to the watch nobody knows what's inside nobody can access the things inside unless you're an expert and you have accessibility but 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 like your webcam that you are using it is showing your face to others that's what is function but nobody knows what's happening inside those are the private functions and private properties of your webcam is it 1080p is it 720p is it high resolution low resolution autofocus all these features are within your camera you cannot access them you can use them indirectly by plugging into a USB and it goes on and turning on your computer so it can show your image but you cannot take your image and push in it or take your webcam out it, it doesn't even it, you cannot even explain it in an, in an object oriented world in real life because it just sounds stupid I want to take that stupidity out over here and make this thing look like a, a real thing which means now I can do this I'm gonna create a public part in here and I'm gonna say these are the public parts that I have this is what we call a class scope so essentially these variables that I have in the account are now private to the account and member variables of the account now and no one can access it by it but the account but account has no functionality we're gonna change that okay so I'm gonna actually take this function out and put it inside the account because get balance is inside the account it has access to all its properties therefore I do not need to pass anything to it because it is part of the account I don't even need to mention that it has access to all properties of the account you know where your ear is you can touch your ear I don't need to mention to you Farad's ear this is my ear I know I'm gonna say my ear scratches what do I do I know where it is I scratch it because it's mine that's what it is over here the balance that you have over here as you see it's part of the account therefore accessible by all the members of the account are we okay with this all right so I'm gonna one by one bring these things in and remove all the things but remember that uh, we have but I'm gonna bring that the get number out and I'm gonna show it to you uh, what happens when I bring this in so I'm gonna bring this in right so essentially I'm I am bringing get number and I want to I want you to have absolute access uh, absolute um, hard attention to what I'm what I'm telling to you right now can anybody tell me why did I make this const microphones on so it doesn't get changed later what yeah and why is that yes because it's, it's very, an account yeah it's be, an account number because because the logic says get number 
But it's, an, it's a mutator method, right? Uh, that okay. Uh, uh, it's not actually a mutator. Uh, what is, uh, what is, uh, it's a query. Mutator can change the accounts. So that's why I okay, don't, I that's why I don't like those buzzwords before uh, we understand the concept. When I say, this is a mutator, the other one's a query, and everybody's going to go, what the hell is going on? I don't want that. I want we understand that when my logic says get number, you're supposed to get number, not change number. That's why I am saving myself from my worst enemy, that is me. Therefore, I make it a constant, so by mistake, I cannot change it over here and say a dot balance is 55. If I do that, then it's going to tell me, hey, you can't. Why? Because expression must be a modifiable value. You cannot change it. It was constant. So we made that constant so we cannot change the A. Are we okay with this? All right. Perfect. Now that we are okay with this, how can I bring this constant? Because I removed the constant from here. I can now change the balance over here. I can say balance is equal to zero. It's one of its properties. And I'm going to put something here, change it. It says get balance, not change balance. What the devil is that? I don't want this. How can I enforce this const so a member variable, a member uh function a method cannot change its owner if the logic di dictates that it's very simple you get this constant and you move it outside <laughs> so it's the same so you put it just outside so you're essentially saying hey my get number is supposed to return the number and not change anything in me this method is supposed to just see what I have peak but no touch it cannot touch anything inside. Now, if I actually say over here, um, number is 25, then it's going to say, wait a minute, what are you talking about? This thing is not modifiable. Expression must be a modifiable value. But if I didn't have that one over there, then I could change me. So that const prevents me. That's again, uh, again, Remember this thing, this is like the golden rule of programming. Look at the name of your function. If your function dictates, I'm not, sorry, method, member function. If your member function is not supposed to change anything by the name, it's get balance, display, things like that, make sure they are constant, okay? So do we understand what the constant is after over here? All right. Dale, are you, are you with me? Maroch. So, okay, go as long as the constant is there, you can't change anything? No, you can just get all? it. Just read. It becomes read only. So this okay. becomes, so let me just write it over here. Becomes read only. Okay, that's all. All right, and I'm going to actually comment this and get it out of the way so we don't get cluttered by that, and I'm going to later on set it up. So we have get balance, get number. We have done this. Now, I want to open an account. So if I want to open an account, I'm going to bring the open in. Obviously, I don't need a reference to an account. Okay. Now, my question is, does the open function need to be constant? Does it need to be constant? No. Perfect. Linda was like two other things. So it it no, we don't need to because it's supposed to change an account. Therefore, I'm gonna take those things out and now we have created an open account. Again, as you see, all the references are removed. I'm saying open belongs to the account. Now display. I'm gonna put the display inside. Does the display need to be constant? Dale said no. Yes. Some people said no. It's supposed to. It displays. I'm not supposed to change it. If I look at your face, you're not going to... Your weight is not going to get reduced. You're not going to have less money. I'm looking at you. Looking at something, getting the information and showing something is not supposed to actually... Uh, um, you know, affect me. So I'll take this out. 
I'm going to say uh, const. Also, this doesn't need the reference for the account anymore because it's part of the function. I'm going to say get my number, get my balance, I'm done. Get my number and get my balance. As easy as that. So, um, because display has access to all the parts of your uh, our body. If you decide to something, if you want to eat, you don't call your friend. If you are hungry, you eat. And you call your eat function, therefore your mouth starts eating. You don't, you don't have to call someone else to eat when you're hungry. It's, I know it's, it feels stupid when you say, talk about these type of um, uh, examples, but that's what it is. If I want to deposit something into the account, my question is, ladies and gentlemen, if I want to deposit something into an account, do I need to make this thing constant or I do not? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. So my question was wrong. One more time. Does this need to be constant? No, it doesn't need to be constant because I'm depositing money into it. So I remove the account. Again, we don't need a reference. Deposit belongs to it. And I'm just going to say add the value to the balance. And nobody's going to ask you why you're putting too much money in there. So you can't do that. Now, um, so deposit is done. Now I want to withdraw from the account. If I want to withdraw from the account, my question is, do I need to have this thing as constant? No, I don't need to. Beautiful. So that's that. So I'm going to say over here, I'm going to do it like that. I'm going to say, so I'm going to remove that. And the rest of the logic remains the same. I just don't need to mention to say whose balance because it's my balance. I'm going to remove the references to, to the thing. And that's that one. So now I'm withdrawing from whatever I have. And finally, if I want to close the account, what do I do? Copy. I'm going to put it over here, closing the account. So closing the account obviously doesn't need to be constant. I'll remove the, the, the account reference. I'm going to get the balance. I'm going to set them to zero and I'm going to return the balance that I removed. Now, now that I have done this and it kind of became encapsulated and uh, let me just pause the recording for a second and thank you very much for, for reminding me of that. <coughs> Miles, Hamam, Miles and Hamam are not here. I know that Ali and Elham said that they're going to have an ice cream, but I think they can have their ice cream and listen too. Let me see. Miles, where are you? Come on. You can do it. Miles. You. No. Not here. Not here. All right. Uh, all right. So uh, now uh, let's. Uh, ice cream is done. Perfect. All right. Goody, goody. I wish I had one to give one to my daughter, but couldn't have one. <laughs> Anyways, so uh, uh, where were we? Where is my Visual Studio? Did I close it? Uh, somewhere around here. Voila. Okay. So now let's see what are the effects of what I've done in here. Take a, let's take a look. Now, I'm going to start right from the beginning, and I'm going to comment everything and start from the beginning and keep going like that. So... So I'm going to, uh, let's actually comment like this. It's easier. So I'm going to go like that. And then line by line, on and comment and, and change it to the object-oriented way. Okay. So first of all, I want to open my checking account. Okay. So that's what I'm doing. Open checking. Okay. So open checking account. Um, so instead of doing that, I'm going to ask the checking account to open itself. So this is going to go away. It's going to say checking dot open. See what the difference is? Now I'm saying checking, open yourself. As soon as I do that, let's see what happens. It actually goes to the open and passes the number into 2345 because open has access to its private properties it sets the number and everything 
and name and balance and it goes through it like that so as you see it's actually set right now and we come come down now we can do that for all these things one by one and see how it's going to happen so i want to display the checking account no i'm going to say checking display yourself so in here i'm going to say display checking dot display and i want to deposit 200 dollars into checking i'm going to say checking dot deposit Oh, deposit, and I'm going to put $200 in it, then I'm going to say display yourself, so I'm going to go over here, checking dot display again, and now I want to withdraw from the checking account, so instead of saying passing checking to a withdraw function, I'm going to say checking withdraw yourself and appreciate the fact and that now the withdrawal of the checking is called that it belongs to that one and it does everything for itself the good thing is that this becomes impossible now take a look it won't allow me do this anymore if we give me a compiler hey what are you doing if you are supposed to add to the balance deposit something into it Use the function so your checking account is aware of $200 coming into the account. You cannot just go over there and change stuff. You have to do it automatically. You have to do it uh, uh, indirectly using the methods that we have. And the same thing over here. So that becomes dot .display. Withdraw the same thing. So instead of checking over there, I'm going to say checking dot withdraw and goes exactly like that for all of them and this becomes the object oriented thing that is and again over here and that one and finally I want to close the checking account I'm gonna say checking dot close it still returns the thing perfectly there is no problem with that and at the end I'm gonna show the display uh, I'm gonna have the checking account display itself the display and that is it and running this works exactly the same way which means when I actually run it uh, it actually gets through every single piece of the application exactly how we have written it oh wrong one sorry so it opens the account displays the account displaying 200 bucks so everything works exactly the same thing but now it's in an object-oriented way. It doesn't seem like something extraordinary happens. You're going to say, so what's the difference? You had the function outside, now you have it inside. That's a huge difference. That's a huge, huge difference. Okay, now I'm ready to add this bank name thing over there to add a little bit of dynamic memory allocation touch in here. But beforehand, let me just, before that, doing that, let me just do one thing. Just a second. You are now muted. You are now on mute. All right. So um, are we okay down to here? New Shane? Majd, Mahrokh. All right, not here. All right, so now I'm going to add that. Well, I need more time to digest, to be honest. Oh, digest. <laughs> oh, uh, okay, so if you have a question, let me know. Yeah, sure. Thank you.
you're welcome <laughs> all right all right so now I'm gonna have this thing again I'm gonna say over here bank name over here bring the bank name in and I'm not gonna change the bank name get balance and everything but when I'm opening the account I'm gonna say in which bank account in which bank institution so I'm gonna say over here uh, const character pointer bank name and in here I'm gonna say um, let's add the C string that we have include C string dot H why didn't it add it it should have include that's why okay and using namespace namespace SDDS all right now what I'm gonna do in here is in my opening I'm gonna say uh, M bank account ba oh, bank name will be set to new character uh, str len of bank name plus one so I'm uh, setting that one out and what I can do over here now I can actually validate stuff to see if things are happening properly or not like are they actually giving me a bank name or the bank name they're giving me is wrong say I mean like it's null pointer things like that so if things go wrong you can always put your bank account in a status that is uh, uh, kind of identifies it as an invalid bank account we'll talk about that later but let's just now do it so now in here I'm gonna do it like that and then I'm gonna say SDR copy into bank name the bank name that I just have over there and there you go so that's the allocation and when do I need don't need it anymore when I close the bank account at the end so when I close the bank account at the end now I can say actually delete bank account bank name and be done with it okay so now when I actually open the account I can say over here TD Canada Trust like that and where is my uh, display so in here I'm gonna say see out and bank name and L so, or I'm just gonna put it right beside this that's better I'm going to put it right over here saying this is TD Canada Trust account number. That's better. All right. And run. And when I run it, oh, close the account. Something went wrong. Ah! beautiful see what happened over here let's take a look you see the garbage over here that is printed okay so now my display at the end is displaying the account after it's being closed and because in closing I set my I deleted my bank name then I didn't do it right because if I if you recall I told you whenever you are dealing with dynamic memory allocation after you deleted something you have to always set it to null so that's what I'm gonna do bank name now I'm gonna set it to null PTR now I'm good so it's actually set to that one and now I can go to my display in here and do something like this in my display I'm gonna say if M bank name which means bank account is not null do this otherwise see out account is closed this account is closed and go to new line and now see what happened in here so what happened is what happened in here is says I'm doing this and I'm saying this account is closed so now if I actually run the program you will see that actually at the end it says 
close the account we threw that one this account is closed so it's not showing garbage anymore uh, and that's uh, the beauty of the uh, uh, of methods because in each method you can actually see the properties of the uh, program and see if the program is actually uh, see the property of the object and see in what uh, status your object actually is uh, are we okay with this Now I can even make that thing better by naming this thing because I'm checking if this is null, say this account is a closed. When somebody looks at it and says, why they are checking the bank name to be null? What does that mean? To that, I'm going to give a meaning, which means I'm going to say over here, Boolean is closed. And I'm going to say return not null PTR. Uh, return and uh, not m uh, m bank name so if this is null null is zero null zero is true is closed with will re return true if it is not null it is actually pointing to something it means we have a name and if we have a name the account is open so now we can instead of writing something like this I can actually writing write a more meaningful code over here saying if is closed then I'm gonna do this otherwise I'll do this so this becomes more uh, uh, understandable what happened to this is closed this should be good why is it giving me an error oh ah beautiful another beautiful thing happened in here okay take a look you see this is giving me an error now okay let me bring these closed up over here that's a perfect example that's why I like to write the program live so when we see bad things happen we understand exactly what the design flaw is okay first of all do we understand why I wrote is closed perfect no who said no miles because um, because you should always to be able to have meaningful queries that tells you what is your business logic if I just checked the bank name in here to see if it's null or not and printed this is closed three weeks from now I would come over here I would check over there and say why the bank name is being set to be closed what the devil is that but when I actually write a function called is closed and return the condition it actually explains what is the condition of a bank account being closed therefore the business logic uh, is obvious uh, are we okay that with miles you can answer in the chat or use the microphone or say something are we good okay beautiful so, so that means comments are not enough right of course it's they're not comments are not visible by the programmer when you actually write when you actually write checking dot it's not the comments that shows up it shows close deposit display get balance get number is closed open withdraw and you can see exactly what your checking account is doing there are no comments in there there are but you have to bring your thing over it and comments are when your code is not self-explanatory when your code is designed properly with proper names then that's a good thing to do are we good good all right next thing um, now um, Humam can you tell me why it's giving me an error where I actually have this can you guess because it comes before it before the, the no 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 remember we are in a class because we are in a class everybody knows each other it's not before and after thank you for saying that it does oh, not okay. matter which one comes after which one when you are in a in a class like this everything is accessible to each accessible to each other and sequence is not important okay number two can anybody tell me
No? What is display? What is the type of display? Constant. Because constant, correct? Oh my God, yes. Yeah. Now, now I am calling a function inside a constant function that is not constant. So compiler is stopping me, telling me, hey, what are you doing? You told that display is not supposed to change the class. You are calling a function that it can change the class because it's not constant. Now I know that I have written something wrong. My design is wrong. Is closed is only supposed to tell me if the account is closed or not. Therefore, it's not supposed to change it. Therefore, I have to make it a const. And now everything is beautiful. So See, without the const, the program is just contradicting It won't compile. Contradicting so itself? This is what we call uh, uh, type safety. This is what object orientation is. It enforces the design. So you can't do crappy stuff anymore. When you follow the rules, you miss the rule at one place, it notifies you. So, I'm, so I'll be sure that I shouldn't by mistake over here say, I don't know, M balance is zero. Because its job is to only tell what the situation of the account is, not to change anything in the account. Are we okay with this now? Okay, Ali and Miles, what browsers you're using? Quickly. Chrome. Hmm, no surprise. Okay. I don't know. Uh, I, I wanted to say change your thing, but anyways. I uh, don't have too many tabs. Okay. okay, so when you're actually coming to class, try to shut everything down on your computer and only have one browser open for the, for the lecture. Uh, probably that's going to help. Anyway, so now that we have this, we understand how everything works in here. Um, what I'm going to do uh, is this. Uh, first of all, I'm going to show you what happens if I change this to a class. If I change it to class, you know what happens? Nothing. It's exactly the same because I have the private and the public in here. <laughs> but if you have a class and you don't put private over here, it becomes by default public. So I'm going to say no need for private since class is private by default. So if somebody tells you, or I'm going to ask you the next time when we are in the next quiz, what is the difference between a class and structure? You have to tell me no difference. They are identical. The only difference is that a structure is public by default and a class is private by default. So the question is going to come. The difference between uh, uh, a, a, a class and a structure is that um, a, a, a structure is private uh, public by default and a class is private by default so i don't need to write private over there it is private by default do we understand this so i'm changing it to a class just for the heck of it now how do we change this to a module let me just change it to a module and have my account thing actually work so this one becomes kind of an oo account so i'm going to say put, i'm going to put c and i'm going to say kind of OO account because it is not really OO because I don't have all the good stuff in it but it's it's getting there so uh, it's not structured anymore it's leaning towards object orientation now let actually create a module so I have an account I know immediately if I have an account I need two things if I have an account I need two things so I'm gonna say add a class a class name is account so it's account header file, account CPP, and I'm going to click on OK. Class not registered. What do you mean not registered? Huh? Oh, because I already have it in here. Cancel. Seriously? So, see, this is the uh, new feature. I, I could actually do that before, but now because I think because I already have a class called account in here, that's why it doesn't allow me to create one for some unknown reason. So, temporarily, I'm going to remove this. 
I think that was the reason. Uh, remove, and I'm going to say, let's do it one more time and see if it's going to work now. Now I'm going to right click over here, say add class. So I'm going to create account. Okay, there we go. So you see, because I was lazy to create both stuff, so uh, I just create, so it actually creates the CPP as you see and already includes the account. All I need to do over here is to add my safeguard. So I'm going to go, uh, if not define, uh, SDDS account. Remember that we are actually uh, in, uh, we are following the rules now because I'm creating a module and that becomes a define. So I've changed it one to define and I'm going to bring my class uh, declaration in here. Save it right there. Um, the next thing I need to do is to put this in a namespace SDDS, SDDS and put it right down here. Then I'll bring my class account in here. So I'm going to open up my program, add existing item, prg.cpp. So I'm going to take the account class over here and I'm going to bring it as a whole thing, as a whole in there. X, uh, so I'm going to just remove it from CPP, put it in a header file. Okay and put it in the CPP file. Then I'm going to remove the pieces I don't need. Now, in the header file, all I need to do is to, in an, in an account, when I actually want to separate them in a module, is to have the, the prototypes of the, of the functions in there. So this, so I just literally move the bodies and add a semicolon. Take a look. I'm not doing anything other than removing the body and add a semicolon to the thing one by one. So as you see now, all my uh, functions are turning to prototypes and uh, oh, I think I missed something in here. There you go. So this becomes my accounts declaration. Take a look at here. Do I have anything? Do I need to include any header file? Do you think I need to include any other file in here? I like the hesitation that people actually think and then they say no. Yeah, perfect. No, I don't need to because there is no use of anything in here that dictates I need a header file included. You only include the header file where you need it, not just uh, by chance and see what happens. And you shouldn't think that, oh, the account.cpp is going to use C string, so let's add it over there. You never do that, ever. Remember, never, ever do that. Okay? Two people said yes, Krat and jo Jacob. Were you just outside doing something? You ran and actually uh, pressed the yes button? Krat, Jacob, why did you say yes? I should say no i just mentioned it's uh, h file oh By itself. <laughs> yeah you have your little brother over there and you said whenever you see something comes up just click on yes i'm gonna go to the washroom and come back didn't you you did that right <laughs> confess <laughs> anyways all right so that's what we have so that's that's my header file now i'm gonna go to account.cpp now in account.cpp i i need to remove everything and only have my functions so this is not needed this is not needed and I need to have my functions. But the problem is that how does the compiler know who this get balance belong to? This get balance belongs to account, right? So I need to somehow mention it so it knows wh which class the imp this implementation belongs to. It's very simple. When you create the implementation of a, of a method, of a member function outside of the class by itself, this is called when you put it inside they call it inline if you put it if you put the definition of something inside the class it becomes inline they call it inline so but if you don't put it inside you have to mention this class belongs to account therefore you need to actually mention over here account scope resolution which means this double belong oh i forgot the namespace sorry namespace stds so we are in namespace stds i have to put that on let me put that on first 
So we are in namespace SDS and now I'm saying get balance belongs to the account. And I keep going like that. Get number belongs to the account. Open belongs to the account. Display belongs to the account. Is closed belongs to the account. Deposit belongs to the account. Withdraw belongs to the account. Close belongs to the account. Okay? And everything goes right in there. Now I need to see what is being used here if I need to include anything. I see C in and C out is here. Therefore, I'm going to include IO stream using namespace STD. Okay. Uh, and then I have strlen, and that needs me to include my C string. Dot H. And I don't need to say using namespace std because now everything is in the namespace std, so they're going to actually merge with, you, with each other. Now my account is set properly and I can go to my uh, uh, program.cpp and all I need to do over here to say include uh, account and of course that's going to resolve all the account issues but I need to check with the C, C in and C out and for that I'm going to include uh, Oh, I already have seen us here. I don't need SDDS in here. Oh, I do because I have, I mean, I am in the account. So, so SDDS and I'm going to bring it down. So I'm good. So now it runs the exact same way in a modular way. It compiles everything and it runs exactly the same way. I have a module account like this which essentially the declaration of the, of the uh, class goes in here. Therefore, if somebody wants to know what my account does, it doesn't need to look at all the gibberish things that I have written. It just opens this one and simply says, okay, I have an account, it's a name. Uh, and just to clarify things, I can say over here, dynamic. And We'll go through it, get balance does this, get number does this, bank name, number, balance, everything's good. And one thing that I want to emphasize is that always put meaning value, values over here. So value to deposit, that doesn't hurt. It doesn't make any difference. Compiler completely ignores it. That gives you an opportunity to actually emphasize on what the, thing, uh, what the function does. So I'm going to say value to withdraw. So instead of actually writing uh, a, a comment over here saying that uh, a value to be withdrawn from the account, I simply say Boolean withdraw double value to withdraw. Anybody looking at this says, okay, this function withdraws the money and tells me if it's successful or not. No comment needed. Are we okay with this? All right, so that's essentially what modules, uh, what uh, privacy is. One thing I have to mention to you, for example, uh, in this program, as you see. For that, uh, yes. may I ask why we have uh, private in our class? Why? Because you're we not supposed, because I don't want to do this halfway through. What if I do this? Like uh, checking, what if somebody does this? checking dot I can't even do it anymore Ch M balance set to 23 what, what if somebody does that no I'm not about uh, that I'm about header file why do we have a private in our class that's exactly what I said so you, you cannot <laughs> access the guts of the class but because because we automatically have all uh, things private. No, not at all. Oh, a class is a class that it says everything is, oh, why do we have private over there? Just a comment, that's fine. You can leave it or not leave it. I'd rather have it over there. You're absolutely right. I can remove it. You're absolutely right. But I always put it anyway because it kind of comes to your eye and kind of screams that this is private. That's all. Thanks. It's just a matter of being a geek, <laughs> if that explains, okay? Another thing I wanted to say, take a look at your logic. Like, take a look at here. You see, get balance and stuff are not used at all, right? 
if your logic doesn't need some functions to be used outside, even make those functions private. If some, if they are supposed to only display to see everything about an account, they can't just see what is the balance and just see what is the number. That's what you do. Don't make everything public. Try to put stuff that are not needed in a private section as much as possible. That makes the account more understandable for everyone and prevents confusion. So if somebody now goes checking, they know that they can close, deposit, display, open and withdraw. That's it. If they display, it's going to show everything about the account. I don't need to display only the, the balance or check only the number. Okay, so that's that. All right. Uh, do we understand what happened now? One of the big mis misunderstandings about private and public that they say attributes, member variables are private and member functions are public. That is not the case at all. It all depends on your business logic. Sometimes you need a member variable to be public. Sometimes you need a member function to be private. It all depends on your logic. Okay? So that's that. Uh, I think we are good. There is only one thing that I wanted to mention. The is close that you see over here. It sets, it's what they call uh, empty state. So what I did over here, I actually is closed, tells me if my account is in an empty state or not. Uh, and this is something important that you need to have. And you need to have that in all the stuff. Like for example, in withdraw, what I need to do over here is this, okay? I need to be able to do, like when I'm actually withdrawing, before I do withdraw, before I check the possibility on anything, I have to say if Boolean is possible, if it's not is closed and the balance is like that. So all this stuff, so if I'm actually adding deposit to that one, it has to always be if not is closed. So you check, so you check always check the empty state of your class before you do anything that makes your uh, functions uh, intelligent your functions do things properly you cannot deposit in an account that is not that is closed you cannot withdraw from the account that is closed so those are the things that you're doing you have to open the account to to see what your what 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 comes in and that's as simple as it can get uh, do we understand the, uh, the, uh, the meaning of an empty state? An empty state is essentially a status that your class is in that is recognizable, tells you this class is not usable. Okay? And you always set your class to that case if you need to. So you could have actually a function called something like set or... Um, Oh, we already have close, so forget it. So, so close essentially over here is set empty. So, so this is sets to empty. This is checks for empty. Checks for empty state. For empty state. That's that. Now. About receiving stuff, getting stuff, uh, um, essentially when I want to get something from input, how it happens when I want to uh, print something on output. The, I'm going to uh, give you an example of it. We're going to go through it. I'm going to write a couple of functions to show you what C in and C out they do. Uh, and uh, uh, we'll go through it and we'll see what happens. So, um, uh, we, so uh, I'm going to write one function over here and that function I'm going to call it um, void. Uh, we had display, so this one I'm going to call it read. This is not constant. It reads from the screen. So reads this information from the console. So I'm going to actually add this and in here I'm going to show you how things happen. How can I make things uh, uh, foolproof so we can actually read something properly. Um, so 
uh, I'm gonna and the good thing is that when you actually do like this bring your mouse over here go on a screwdriver and say create definition for reading account dot CPP and poof it creates it for you over there just save it and get out and uh, your account dot CPP now has the thing that you want to implement you see <laughs> it actually adds it for you in here so that's a cool thing so first let me actually do the display to see exactly uh, how the display works and how we can actually uh, um, display stuff in a uh, in a nice formatted way. To do stuff like that, you you can make the uh, the display of yours. Let's see out to act in a specific way. So what you can do is to actually say, so I want the bank name to be printed. I want this bank name to be printed in uh, say. Uh, uh, um, I want this to be set with C out that set with it was or oh, with not set with with. Okay, so I'm gonna say I want the bank name to be how big is the bank name? I don't know. Well, say the bank name is gonna be thirty, so I'm gonna put it in thirty characters, thirty thirty spaces. Then I'm going to say cout.set uh, uh, f, which is essentially uh, uh, set a flag. And in here, I'm going to say iOS left. So I want the next output to be printed in 30 characters and left justified. And that's going to be the bank name. So that's that one. Okay, then I'm going to show the account number. And after showing the account number, I want to have the number that is printed to be in uh, um, 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 two digits after the decimal point, something like that. So you can actually set the width like for this one too, but I don't want to do it, but try it. So C out dot uh, uh, set. Uh, F, I'm going to say um, th there are two different things. You can have a, a fixed or scientific. When you do fixed, um, you are telling to the compiler iOS fix. Uh, you are telling to the uh, uh, C in it to, to C out, uh, don't just see what is the best format of a double. I want you to only use one fixed format. Uh, format for your double and print it that way. Oh, sorry, this is the uh, account number. So for this, we don't need it. I'm just going to set width for that. this. My apologies. This one was, so that's for that. And I'm going to go see out balance and see out get balance. So that comes before this. So I want to print the balance. I want it to be fixed and I want the precision for it. To be two, which means two digits after the decimal point, um, and that's it. So uh, right now you can do it that way, or you can actually say, "I want the width of this." If you want it to be uh, in a, uh, actually, actually do that for. I'm going to do that for the for the integer number. So in here, I'm saying um, I want it to be a fixed format, which means I tell you what is the format. You don't print the best thing that you think it's good, which means it's going to be exactly in a non-scientific form. And I want two digits after the decimal point. And for the account number, I'm going to say set the width. So C out dot width. And I'm going to set the width to say uh, 10. Let's say account number is 10 and or let's make it eight. And then I'm going to say C out, fill whatever that is empty with zero, and C out iOS, uh, sorry, uh, set F, um, set F, right justified. Okay, so iOS right. And then 
after all these is th oh, so sorry uh, fill with zero character not zero like that so fill with zero character and then after that because I don't want all the other stuff to remain with zero I'm gonna set the fill back to space after that so I'll make sure that uh, um, it's back to uh, zero so uh, it's gonna be right justified the number and the left will be filled with zero just take a look at this I'm gonna run it so you'll see exactly how it works uh, let's go through it I'm gonna go to the display so it comes over here uh, I open the account and I'm gonna go to display so it's gonna come to display here and uh, let's take a look at the output so it's gonna say width is 30 iOS left print the bank name so it prints that bank name and goes 30 characters forward as you see now I'm gonna say width is print the account number now width is 8 set the fill with 0 set the uh, justification to right and get the number and print it so it prints 1 2 3 4 5 and fills the left with 0 now I'm gonna say print balance now for the balance I'm gonna say it's fixed precision is 2 and print the balance and it's gonna print the balance like that you could have set width for the balance too but I just didn't as you see now for for example for this Canada trust thingy over there because it's too long I have too many spaces what I could do was something like this so I could actually have a set fill over here saying see out uh, see out dot fill and I would say put dots over there should kind of see that Canada Trust uh, is actually uh, the account for this one so if, if I run it again as you see now it puts 30 30 characters left fill and when it prints the bank name it puts dots in front of it so it kind of looks m cooler like that I hope uh, um, and then it shows the balance and all the good stuff so that essentially will be the output so this is how you format left and right please take a look at the the notes and to see exactly how it works and that's that um, and uh, let's stop it now um, how many people can stay more than 1135 say yes Okay, for those people who cannot, because majority can, for those people who cannot, please watch the video after 87 minutes. Um, not 80 minutes, 90 minutes. After 90 minutes, watch the video. That's going to be CN. I'm going to explain how CN works. I'm going to start right now, and then we'll continue after that. Okay, so um, I want to actually now write a, a kind of a foolproof CN. Let me just put this like this because we know exactly what is where. So um, I'm going to go to the account and I'm going to do the read thingy. So I'm going to actually go through the definition of read. So um, I'm going to just say go to definition and that's going to bring the read. Now I want to read over here from screen. So essentially I'm going to say see out uh, enter name. To enter name, you already know what uh, uh, get line is. So I'm going to say C in. Uh, so to be able to have a proper size over here, I'm going to say character pointer uh, uh, temp. and uh, Sorry, character temp. And let's say it was 30 characters in length. So I'm going to put 30. So in here, I'm going to put uh, 31 because that's the maximum length of the name of the thing. Then I'm going to say C in dot get line that receives uh, a name including spaces and everything and stops at backslash n uh, and I'm gonna say put it in temp and after putting it in temp now uh, uh, the size will be 31 and stop after that then I have to flush the keyboard to read everything out of the keyboard if I need to what get line goes up to backslash n if it's anything more than that then I need to but we don't need to check that for that for now I'm just uh, uh, showing you how it works now C in is a pretty shy object which means if this goes wrong which means if somebody actually enters more than 31 characters C in says you told me 31 and I stopped this something went wrong I don't I don't know what to do so that's how it's gonna happen we're not gonna catch it for now but we'll see later on how we're gonna do it 
but this is going to go up to 31 characters. Then I want to uh, actually set uh, the name of the account. Uh, so I'm going to say over here set name because I don't know what it is. And I'm going to put over here temp. So it's going to actually set the name of the account. Now I'm going to create the function for it, which I have actually have written that over here. So I'm going to go in uh, program.cpp and in uh, in uh, header file and in here I'm going to say set name and create the definition for it so and essentially put exactly what we had over there and here it's going to be con uh, constant character pointer name and we're going to do the exact same thing over here. And um, I'm going to put over here name and name. So essentially it allocates the name for me. So I'm going to save it. OK, but before doing anything like that, um, I need to be able to uh, uh, set. Uh, uh, yeah, so I need to be able to uh make sure that the value that i have is not pointing to anything this is not uh, uh a kind of a right thing to do at this point because uh, when i open an account the bank name is already there and i'm going to have memory leak so this should only happen if your object is created at uh, and it's nothing is set in it it's not open yet so what you need to do essentially is this the best way of doing it is to create a function over here. Let's call it init to initialize everything, set everything to what you want, uh, to have a default value for all the things that you have. So it's going to be void account init. Now in this init, what I do, I set it to a safe empty state. You know what is that? Because it's supposed to happen. So you have to make sure that you call this first before you do anything with your uh, object. Later on, we're going to find out how can we make this automatic. But for now, we're going to do it manually. So I have to actually say over here, M bank name balance is zero. I'm setting everything to null. M uh, bank name is null pointer m uh, number is zero so essentially when i'm actually using when i create an account i have to first initialize it and then do it so for this read thingy now uh, i see that uh, maybe it would be better if i reuse my code instead of set name here so i'll take the set name out you see i have an i see i have an open account you'll see that its set name becomes redundant because open is doing it so why don't i just create over here double um, value um, uh, balance and an integer number and I just get these values and they call the thing so it's instead of having set name over here called an extra function where I already have it why don't I just write over here open with the temp and uh, a number number and balance and here I have the name. Now after the name, I'm going to get the number. So I'm going to go C in number. So I am going to have C out enter number. And then I'm going to have C out um, enter balance. And I'm going to have C in balance and do it like this. This is essentially reusing my code. I don't want to write a set name and uh, bloat my um, uh, class. Bloating means having too many functions in it when you don't need it. I'll take it out. Or if I'm using this set name, uh, I'm going to put in a private one and call it here. So I'm going to call set name here, set name, bank name. So set name, bank name, and this is going to go in a private thing in case some sometime I want to use it. So I have the set name 
and I'm and I'm using it, but um, I'm not bloating my logic by um, having extra repeated code. I'm just going to call the set name function. And as you see, set name is private, which means nobody else has used it. Only read can use it, and read can use open, so we are good to go. So now this read is going to actually read the information for account, and this one I'm going to put over here. I'm going to call it C D um, uh, account unit test one dot cpp and for the next one i'm going to do the same so uh, i'm going to take this out and now i'm going to write a new tester for this i'm going to write account checking and i'm going to say checking dot init first i initialize it then check in dot read and now I can say checking dot deposit one hundred dollars and checking dot display to see what we have in it and when I run the program hopefully if it works properly then I'm gonna say enter name I'm gonna say TD Canada Trust hit enter enter number one two three four five enter balance three hundred dollars it's going to say td account at canada trust account number is that and balance is four hundred dollars because i deposited a hundred so this seems to be okay now um so this was the read function that i have done are we okay down to here So I didn't do anything in particular with C in yet. So first of all, let's see what get line and uh, these things are going to do if I actually enter more than 30. So what I'm going to do now is to try and enter more than 30 characters and walk through it and show you what happens. So I'm, I'm going into this one and I'm going to go to read and I'm going to walk through it and show you what happens if I actually enter more than 30 characters. So... I'm going to write, come right down here, get line, okay, and I'm going to hit F10. Okay, now in here I'm going to put something that is more than 30 characters, and I hit enter. Okay, so it seems like when you look at temp, temp has the values inside right down to F at the end, but it stopped at 30, so if you look at this, I don't know why it's showing it like that, not a string. Oh, yeah, there we go. It is on the screen, so it only gets the 30. So there is no uh, memory problem happening over here, and we are all good down to this point. But we'll take a look and see what happens with, with the next C in. Oh. So it actually comes over here now. It jumps over C in as if nothing happens. It jumps over balance as if nothing is there. And... So it all went bananas. Let's see what's going on here. Um, it wasn't just because it is. Let, let me show you something else. So we would, we might think, okay, because the values you're entering, they are not numbers. Therefore, CN cannot read it. But let's go to get line one more time. I'm going to actually uh, run to the cursor. So just write, get right, it, right to that one. Enter name. And in here, I'm just going to, Oh, in here, I'm just going to execute this one, F10. And just, I'm going to put number. Oh, not dash, number. So now it should be able to read something. When I come over here, temp now has all the numbers in there. And it's definitely more than 30. Now when it comes to C, and let's see if it's actually going to read the number or not. Garbage. It didn't read anything. Balance. It didn't read anything. So what the heck happened? As I mentioned, C in is a very shy object. If anything goes wrong with it, the way it, and it doesn't work the way it expected to, it's going to just not talk to you anymore. It's not going to be functional. It's going to be dead. It says, I'm not doing anything until you acknowledge that you did something stupid. So what I can do here is this. I can say, okay, C in get line. Now I'm going to say if C in dot fail, which means 
if somebody entered more than 31 characters over there, then what do I need to do? I need to ignore all the rest of the garbage that I have in the keyboard. So I can say cn.ignore, I don't know, 3,000 characters up to backslash n, which means if some if somebody entered more information oh by the way i cannot say c and ignore because it c in still in a failed state i said if you fail first i apologize clear it means let me be clear i apologize say sorry <laughs> okay it means i did something wrong now whatever is in keyboard keep dumping it up to backslash and then stop now we can read the number so now I throw the rest away. Now I'm reading the number. Again, in here I can say if, or in here I'm not going to actually, yeah, I'm going to say if c in the fail. What does it mean? Somebody entered a stupid integer that is not supposed to be integer. What do I do? Again, c in dot clear. It means I apologize. Then because I couldn't read it, I have to dump it out. So again, clear keyboard, exactly like this. So this is, remember keyboard flush? This is flush keyboard. Now in here, I'm going to say ignore, again, another 3,000 characters. So be done with it. But because I couldn't read the number, then I have to go back. So I have to say, put a flag over here, uh, bool, done is equal to false. Then in here I have to say while not done, sorry, it added this IntelliSense thing sometimes goes on my nerves, adding stuff where it's not supposed to. Yeah, so I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put a while around it. So saying what while not done, get it. If it fails, it's still not done. Otherwise, else, done is true. So what happens is that it gets the number. If it fails, it clears it. Goes over here. In here, I may say something bad number redo okay so just showing that hey you enter a bad number redo and I can do the exact same logic as I have done for 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 this one I can do it for the balance which means I'm gonna say done is false and bring the balance in balance now I'm gonna say if it failed clear it up bad number redo or bad balance redo and keep going like that so by doing something like this let me just walk through it and see what happens because names can be truncated I'll assume that's the one so I'm gonna say my sorry F10 pass through that one now I'm gonna say my TD Can Canada Trust that I like very much today and forever. Okay, then I hit enter. So what happens is that temp actually gets my theater that I like, the rest is garbage, right? So in here, it's that as soon as it fails, I'm going to say, get in there, clear it, throw the rest in garbage. Now you're ready for the next one. Enter number. It is not done, so I'm coming in. Get a number over here. Now it's going to say account number. So say my account number is um, one, two, three, four. Obviously, it can't read that one. Therefore, it's failed. It's going to come and say, okay, I failed. Sorry about that. Ignore. Bad number. Redo. Go back up and read it again. Now I'm going to say, oh, sorry, I have to say only one, two, three, four. I hit enter. It did not fail because it received it properly. Now it done is true. It comes out and goes to the next one and gets the balance and so on and so forth. So you get the message. Like this, I can actually have a foolproof data entry using CN. Remember, CN 
And all the family of ice stream, they're extremely shy. If something goes wrong with them, you have to first check to see if something's wrong, apologize, clear the garbage, do it again. All right? Are we okay with this? Uh, I have a question. Uh, I don't follow um, which part of this code uh, uh, does the validation. This part. You see that? Uh, validation that we get an integer. Yeah, so that's the thing. That's the beauty of object orientation. Okay, uh, Mahroch, what is that thing called? When the object knows what to get and you don't need to care about it. You simply say read. The yes. object knows that it's reading integer and it validates the integer. That's polymorphism. You don't care what it is. When you say I want balance, CN knows it's a double, it validates the double. When you say read an integer, CN knows it's an integer, it validates an integer. When you say I want to get an integer, a, a, a string with 30, 30 characters, it notes it's a, it's a character, it validates a character. Followed? So C does the validation C, Of course, that's the beauty of it. C it knows how to read an integer. If it's something garbage comes, it says, I'm done, you're talking stupid, I'm not going to talk to you anymore. And simply becomes dead. Unless you clear it, uh, fi uh, uh, acknowledge that it failed, clear it, and ignore it, and then continue after that. All right? Okay, thank you. All right. So the last thing I want to do over here is to not have a mess. So in this case, what I need to do, what I'd like to do over here, because I am uh, reading the name, I am... Uh, reading the number, I am reading the balance. What I want to do is to actually put these things in a proper place. So if I'm reading the number, I don't need to have the, all the garbage in here. Any function that passes more than a page, if you can, you should make it smaller. So enter, like, as soon as I see this, I'm just going to grab this thing over here, as you see, copy, and I'm going to go to account in here. I'm going to say void read number. I'm going to add the private function over there that does it for me actually not void I'm gonna yeah void read number that's fine or mm, I can even make it returning an integer so we know it's actually getting an account number I don't need to it has access to it um, but I'm gonna just return something do I need to return it I'm just gonna do it like this to see what happens so I'm gonna make it const so we know it's not gonna change anything because it is returning it by itself it's not supposed to change anything and in here, I'm going to uh, uh, create the uh, definition. So I'm going to say create the definition in account.cpp. Now in here, I'm going to put the code that I had for it. So I'm going to say enter number, C in number. So I'm going to have integer number here, integer number. And I'm going to return the number, return number. And I need a boolean done that is set to false by default there you go i have the logic of read number in a separate function of its own now i can go back to my account.cpp and instead of this gibberish over here i can simply say what do i say uh, i can simply say in here read number done Okay, so read number is passed to open. I don't need to do anything now. I'm going to get the balance. So I'm just going to get this X and I'm going to go back in the account over here. We don't need that. Let's close it. Now in here, it's going to be read balance, double read balance, const. Oh, create the code in the create the code in the CPP file and copy exactly like that. So it's pretty simple and straightforward. In here, I'm going to say um, double balance. Boolean 
done. And return balance. So balance is returned. Save that one. Go back into the CPP file and put over here a read balance. And I do not need this temporary stuff over here anymore. Read balance. Number done. What I would do actually <laughs> write a read name over here too, but the heck with it. This is just fine. I don't want to go through it. So just uh, like that. And, and then uh, it's going to go one by one and, and run it and see what happens. Now something awkward might happen over here. Uh, take a look. Let me run it. Uh, stop. And run it. Enter name TD Canada Trust. See it's getting the balance first. You see that? That's gonna give you a message to see what it is. So one two three four point five six. Now number is one two three four. Okay, run this on matrix. It might go the other way. So the it happened because the way the functions are called in in C language is that uh, they are they are sent into the function through a, through a stack. So first it puts the temp in a stack, then read number in a stack, the balance. A stack is something that goes one over the other one and you keep putting on the top. Therefore, the last thing that you put in is the first thing that you put up. So what happens is that first it puts the temp in, so if temp goes in a stack, then read number goes in a stack, then read balance goes to a stack, then sends it to the open. Open picks the first one that is at the tops, which is this one, so it goes backward. If you don't want that to happen, then you have to create temporary uh, files for it but run it on uh, uh, run on Linux I'm gonna say run on Linux Linux to see what happens to see if it's uh, which one happens first this is a good example of writing a portable code and you can fix it later on um, to make sure that the, the order is done properly. Again, as you noticed, when a function is called, the last argument is going in first. Run it on Linux and see how Linux is calling it. Is it first one going in or the last one going in? Are we okay with this? Beautiful. So again, to fix that problem, you can create temporary variables over there and put it in there, which is no shame, we can do that. We can simply have something like, uh, we can have int uh, uh, number set to read number. And in double balance set to read balance. And then call the open like this. So call open temp number balance. Okay. Let's put these together and see what happens. So if I do it like this, now it's actually calling it in the other way. As you see, the number is now going in and the balance goes next. Um, what, this one or this one? Let's run on Linux to see what happens. So you know what happens if you actually put it in this way. And I want you to try this. So this goes in reverse order. Reverse order. Why? Will come up. up in reflection. I want you to go investigate and see why the functions, this functions are getting the last argument first. Just read a little bit about it. All right, any questions down to here?
Mustafa, Brent, Alex, casualties of war, they're gone. <laughs> oh, yeah, Mustafa, go ahead. Um, professor? Yes. Please professor, call me Farda if you don't mind. Yes. Yeah, I would appreciate uh, if you uh, call me Farda. Farda? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, I have a question regarding, uh, what was it? Remember the reflection thing we had to submit on your, the blackboard? I How haven't, I haven't, find issue, any, I haven't uh, issued it yet. It I haven't issued it yet. I'll do it. Oh. I have an issue. When are you yet. issuing it? I have no idea. I'm so busy and and things that happening at home. So bear with me. I'll I'll bring it up. Don't worry. You have a chance to do it. And I'm going to give you a week to do it so it's not going to be any rush. Don't worry about it. Worst come to worst, and I'm going to have the reflection and study break. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, and another thing is um should I send you um the reopen problem ticket I have to you? Uh, yeah, sure. Or, uh, no. that, that I want it for reference. So have it. Uh, I want to have it for reference. So tomorrow when I'm going to ITS and the, the, when we are discussing with profs and say how, why you are giving so many extensions to students, because I had problem that, let me just pause recording. Um, to help me help you properly go through the this uh, um, playlist. This is the last video that I put the other day. Go through this playlist, set up your computer to be able to have a private repository, private repository on GitHub, and do your work in there. You are doing it on your own computer. You don't, have, you don't need to put it on GitHub. But anytime you need help, you simply push it. Everything goes to GitHub. Then I can take a look at it. I apply my changes. You put it. You see the differences, and you can get help like that. Simple and easy. Please do it. Okay? Uh, any other question? Um, uh, yeah, uh, it's about uh, quiz two. Uh, it was so difficult. Uh, like uh, you know, in first quiz, uh, I remembered all the things from lectures, but uh, quiz two, I, I'm thinking that you changed your style. No, I didn't change my style. I just, uh, I didn't want to exactly. That's the thing. Again, you're the seeker of knowledge. You have to read. I, what I do, I, this is how I design my quizzes. First, I open the notes in class. That's number one. I take the notes in class, and they are the walkthroughs you are doing. So anything I do in class, those are the ones that you see what is the exact output, and you have to write the exact output. So I get all this up and the points that I make in my notes. Then I open up these. Where is it? Then I open up, say, this, okay? So this is for lecture to, for today's lecture, okay? Then I go to summary. I say, the keyword private identify. So I take this private out, and I put this as a fill in the blank to see if you actually read the notes or not. And that's going to be my, that's, that's how I designed the thing. So if you read this, and you look at the lectures, you're perfectly okay. You've got to get 100%. And um, we dropped a few uh, lowest marks in a, in a quiz, so you'll be fine on that one too. Anyways, let me know if it's getting worse so I can make it easier, okay? Uh, is it possible to extend the time on the quiz or no? Because I feel like 12 minutes is... One minute for each? It's two? Yeah. It's... it's... Why? It's like, like I like looking over, like double checking my answers, and then <laughs> just like more. Honestly, yeah, uh, twelve right. minutes. Yeah, it's so, sometimes so. so like a minute on so each question is I, just... can, I can add fifteen seconds for each question. Is that better? So if you have ten questions, you're gonna have one hundred and fifty minutes extra. But of course, every walkthrough, every walkthrough. <laughs> Every walkthrough, I I give two minutes for it. So, and you know, walkthroughs are very the one that I'm giving you are very simple, very simple walkthroughs. So it's not that difficult. Uh, it's just the walkthroughs that I give you are to the point, only one output. So, but I'll do it. I'll I'll try to make it. I don't know how to make it simple. I literally pick up the things. <laughs> 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 it's the 
I'm not even changing it. I, I don't even change the wordings for heaven's sake. Come on. <laughs> I just pick up the thing and I fill in the blanks. If you just search for it, it comes up. Anyways, <clears throat> so yeah, so I'll I'll give you 15 seconds extra for now. So it's 15 seconds. That's 25% uh, more time. So don't like somebody I just heard you don't think that I didn't hear. You. So just 15 seconds. Yeah. 15 seconds, it means 25% more. In one minute, 15 seconds is 25% more time, okay? It means instead of hour, I'll give you an hour and 15 minutes. So be happy. I'll, I'll try to, and we'll see what happens, okay? Um, oh, so, and one more thing. Yes. For week three quiz, what exactly is it, like, on? Like, because you know it's how you said... on week three. This week and see, this is this is like I always we... mention this, and I'm going to mention it to you again. So, and, and and let me bring it up. Now it's being recorded, so my recording is my witness that I that I told you this. So this is what happens: you open up your you, and this is again as I mentioned for all the things, and it's going to be exactly the same. No difference. Ah, wrong one. So. You go to your uh, class, to your whatever class you're in. You look at weekly schedule. If we are in week two, your quiz is, so if we are we in week three, 70% of the questions are coming from members, member functions and privacy and the notes that I gave you in class. 30% of the notes come from construction, destruction, and current object. The next week, 70% from this, 30% from next one. I want you to review the next pa the next uh, uh, lectures too. And this happens before the lecture, so you have time to go through it. Um, is that okay, or you want me to remove the future ones? No answer? Yes, yes please remove the future ones, if possible. Who said that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just want to see <laughs> who said that. Let me, because you know that in all the other sections, it's only from the future one. You know that, right? They don't ask any questions from current one. In all the other sections, they are hundred percent from the other one. Let's do a couple of more sections with thirty percent of the other one. Let me see what the result is, and then if it goes really bad, then I'm going to bring it back. So for now, let's keep it like that. All right. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Have yourself a beautiful day. One of the important things that they say in a presentation is not to say thank you at the end and salute the users, salute the, the audience. So from now on, if I said thank you, remember, <laughs> remind me of it. So. Um, I salute you for your participation and uh, trying to learn OOP 244. Have yourself a beautiful day, and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much. Thank Take you care. so much. Ciao. Bye-bye. Take care. <laughs> no problem.